All right. Now, I'd first like to discuss the trade wars that are going on right now. Recently, we've seen Trump, um, you know, engage in some trade wars, put tariffs on steel, aluminum. How do you see this impacting the economy? And also, especially because your specialty is precious metals, how do you see this possibly impacting the gold and silver markets? Well, obviously, it created quite the commotion coming out of nowhere in Trump's style. And and the markets reacted vehemently right away and now have done some correcting, but it's still a question what he's going to do. I know later on today they're talking about possibly exempting Canada and Mexico and how it's going to be implemented and what he'll do. You know, he's known for his book, The Art of the Deal, and he likes to throw things out and then negotiate. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But, you know, clearly uh, there are in- inflationary, in- inflationary implications. Uh, should all these things go through? And uh, obviously, they would be good, good for gold and silver. And that's probably why as soon as the gold price rallied on the news, within hours, it was right back down again as the gold cartel went into action to say, no, it's no big deal. It doesn't matter. But it will be interesting to see how it plays out. And again, it's created quite a commotion in the White House with Gary Cohn, his chief economic guy, resigning. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to get very interesting. Now, do you see this being ultimately negative for the economy? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. You know, they, they don't want to do it to be negative for the economy. So it's, it's, as in everything else, there's pluses and minuses. I think the, the general feeling is that, you know, tariffs uh, are going to be negative. But uh, again, that's something we'll have to see how, how, it, how it plays out and what actually occurs. Now, you were recently on Gold Seek Radio and you were talking about how the stock market correction we saw last month, which, you know, in the Dow, it was the two we saw for two days, the greatest point drops we've ever seen in the Dow. This correction that happened, you said, was the tremor before the earthquake. Can you expand on that? Well, we've had, you know, such a quiet, you know, move, steady move up, no corrections. I mean, everybody knows this. It's just been a one way street. And the longer these one-way streets go, the bigger setups are corrections are there. And uh, it's it's only a matter of time before some of the things that uh, have sent the market higher, you know, take it back down. I mean, for example, the tax cut, you know, where's the money going to come from? Everybody's assuming growth will take care of it. And it's going to be a Goldilocks scenario. But we saw what could happen when the volatility index and all of a sudden uh, there was chaos. And I think... Uh, I'm a big fan of Newton's law about equal and opposite reactions. And I think you've had such a steady climb and concerns really disappearing about what a market can do on the downside that we, what we saw was just a tremor of what's going to come out of nowhere and send the market for a real correction. Now, I was just interviewing Chris Martinson from Peak Prosperity, and he was saying that last month, last month's correction was – because the financial system is so interconnected, it nearly crashed the system. What is your perspective on that? And do you think we can survive another downturn? Well, I guess from my perspective, it all depends on how strong the PPT is in controlling the price. You know, the the, uh, the organizations out there ready to stop a market declines, which has all developed since 1987 when they saw what could happen when things get out of control. So. I don't know how much power there they can bring to bear to, you know, you know, to stop a market crash, that kind of thing. You know, we just don't know yet. But getting to what we're talking been talking about, you've had just a one way street for so long and people and while the volatility index went nuts because people are so complacent about this is just going to go on and on. And the odds are that something comes out of nowhere that shocks the system. Again, like the volatility index, what happened there. And it makes it very difficult for those entities trying to support the stock market behind the scenes to actually stand in the way. Now, when it comes to the precious metal markets, if we could turn our focus back to that, recently there's been you know a large uh, speculative net short position in this in silver. What does this mean for the silver market? Well, this is about from what the numbers show, and who knows if they're correct or not. But this this shorts. The, the specs are about as short as they've ever been, at least in the last 10 years in the silver market. And that's an obvious sort of thing to say when you've got the specs so short and potentially a very 
bullish fundamental situation and the bad guys of the JP Morgan crowd less short than they have been, uh, it sets up something, you know, potentially spectacular on the upside. It's just that silver has acted so poorly for so long and bulls like me are never right because the J.P. Morgan crowd keeps coming in no matter what the setup is and, and stops uh, any rallies. I mean, just like we saw the last uh, couple of days, you had silver go straight up some 40 cents. It broke down trend lines. You had all this news about the specs being so short. You had the perfect setup. The next day, the dollar hardly does anything and silver gives up all of its gains. And it, this has gone on for seven years. And uh, one day it's going to change and be explosive, and I think one of the biggest moves in history, getting back to Newton's law again about equal and opposite reactions. But for the time being, it remains the worst acting market I have ever seen. Now, it's even worse than gold right now because we've seen over the last month or so the gold-silver ratio rising, which means you know silver is uh, gold is outperforming silver. Now. It is actually right now around 80 to 1, which is historically very high. I was looking at a 10-year chart, and it's only been up there two other times in the last 10 years. Yeah, it is extraordinary. And normally this is a time when people are writing about it on the Internet today when it's, it's usually extremely bullish for the silver market as time goes by. And there's no reason it shouldn't be different. But the proof will be in the pudding when the silver market takes off and they actually gets a follow through day where you get it up 50, 60 cents and then up 60 cents again, it's just not allowed. And, and that is going to change. There's no question about it. But, you know, I, I, I remarked the other day, it's like uh, a merchant seaman's wife in, in, in days of old of looking in the, in the, uh, out to sea for the ship to show up on the horizon. <laughs> it never does. Uh, it's going to, and it's going to be, again, spectacular. But, you know, we're now into the third month of 2018, and no change. Now, I know we've talked about this before, but for our new viewers, if you could reiterate kind of the price target you're looking for, because I know you've said before that $21 silver is really the key uh, price target, because once it gets through that, you see it'll be – you know, <laughs> um, fast ride up to a hundred dollars. Well, you know, it's just one man's opinion. But after Brexit, you had that incredible run up to twenty one, and it held there and held there for a while. And they've they've been selling it off for years now. And uh, it just seems to me that if we can finally complete this massive bottom and get through twenty one, that it will be explosive and move up in a in a Bitcoin kind of fashion towards 100 and go up much faster this time than it did last time. And basically it will be because the physical market will have dried up. It's been far too low for far too long. Too much supply has been eaten up at too cheap a price. And when it gets through this level, it could be chaotic. Now, that's just, again, my, my opinion. But I think it will go up to, um, to get through 50 this time faster than last time and take off towards 100. All right. Well, Bill Murphy, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where they can find you online? Yeah, well, last thought is it's, I'm tired of this tedium. <laughs> we're, we're due for a change here. And again, it'll probably show up out of nowhere, just like we saw in that volatility index. And as far as what I do at metropolecafe.com, people can check out it out for a two-week free trial. And my colleague, Chris Powell at gata.org, does a great job putting out his stuff and people can sign up for that, uh, that list also.